China's largest coffee chain is the title that currently belongs to a company called Luckin Coffee. With over 9,000 stores, Luckin is by far the largest coffee chain in China, where Starbucks, coming in second place, has just over 6,000 stores in the country. This, however, was not an outcome anyone could have predicted back in 2020 when it was revealed that Luckin had fabricated nearly half of its revenue, leading to a 97% drop in its share price, sending the highly unprofitable company into bankruptcy. Yet just three years later, Luckin has not only survived the scandal, but has somehow even managed to completely turn its business around, recently posting full-year profits for the first time. In this video, we will analyze Luckin's miraculous turnaround and compare its business strategy with Starbucks to understand how Luckin was able to come back from bankruptcy and surpass Starbucks as China's largest coffee chain. Before mounting a miraculous comeback, Luckin was originally on a highway to failure. The company had lost money every single year leading up to its accounting fraud. $230 million in 2018, $450 million in 2019, and $860 million in 2020. Investors were duped into investing in Luckin, who branded themselves as a tech company disrupting the coffee industry. What set them apart from other established coffee chains like Starbucks were two key points. Firstly, every single one of their orders was placed and paid for through their app. This streamlined operations and freed baristas from cashiering duties, who can now focus on just churning out coffee. Secondly, most of Luckin's stores offered either self-pickup or delivery only, foregoing the traditional option of sitting in. This pickup and delivery model lowers rent as it eliminates the need for extensive in-store seating, allowing for the opening of smaller but more cost-efficient stores. This lower cost structure means the company can then lower the price of its coffee to the benefit of consumers. On paper, this sounds like a winning formula that allowed Luckin to offer coffee that was quote-unquote high quality, high affordability, and high convenience. But if that were true, why were they incurring such large losses? Well, the answer lies in the fact that most customers were only attracted to Luckin's coffee solely because of its affordability, not its quality. Prior to the fraud, Luckin was practically giving away coffee for free. They ran free coffee promotions for first-time customers and offered existing customers discounts of up to 80% off. After applying the discounts, the average price for an Americano at Luckin was around $1.4 US dollars versus around $4.5 for a similar coffee at Starbucks. By slashing prices down to one-third of Starbucks, Luckin unsurprisingly saw a surge in customers. However, these customers weren't generating sufficient revenue for Luckin to cover its cost. For every dollar Luckin made in revenue, half went to purchasing raw materials such as coffee beans, milks, and cups, while the other half was used to pay off rent and labor expenses. This means all the other costs not yet mentioned, such as sales and marketing, research and development, and third-party delivery fees were all coming out of Luckin's own pocket. As a result, Luckin's net income margin was enormously negative, reaching a staggering minus 193% in 2018, meaning they spent $3 just to sell $1 worth of coffee. Even after going public in 2019, their net income margin remained at less than minus 100%. Luckin tried to justify this by saying it was all a part of their loss leader strategy, which involved a three-step process of 1. Offering coffee at unprofitable prices in order to rapidly acquire customers, 2 have customers keep drinking their cheap coffee so that they get hooked to it, and three, turning a profit eventually by slowly raising prices. However, the problem with this strategy was that those who ended up becoming hooked on Luckin's coffee weren't attracted by its taste, but rather by its ridiculously low price. The majority of Luckin's customers were people who drank coffee for its functional use, such as office workers and students, most of which couldn't care less about the taste and were only interested in finding the cheapest coffee nearby to help them stay alert. So when Luckin raised prices in 2019, many of the customers that were driven mainly by low prices stopped purchasing, leading to a notable decline in sales volume, making it evident that Luckin would not be able to turn a profit with their original strategy. This predicament was what ultimately led management to fabricate sales figures to create an illusion of gradual profitability, when in reality they were actually bleeding even more money. After the accounting fraud was exposed, the company's leaders were ousted and Luckin seemed destined for an untimely demise. However, against all odds, the new management team orchestrated a remarkable turnaround, transforming the struggling business into a profitable venture within a mere three years. To analyze how they were able to achieve this, we can utilize the classic profitability framework to break down their new business strategy into the two components of increasing profits, namely one, cost reduction, and two, revenue growth. On the cost side, Luckin implemented measures to reduce expenses whilst retaining their core coffee retailing business. 
For example, the company immediately stopped their aggressive store expansion and closed down underperforming stores, resulting in a decline in the number of company-operated stores from around 4,500 to 3,900 in 2020. Considering how the number of stores more than doubled in the previous year, this reflected Luckin's complete reversal from their prior reckless expansion towards store optimization. The company also discontinued unprofitable side businesses, such as their retail vending machines initiatives, as well as a joint venture in making fruit juice, both of which were just fluff used by previous management to aid with their growth narrative. In addition, Luckin drastically cut spending on sales and marketing by 60%, decreasing it from $116 million in 2019 to $53 million in 2021. As a proportion of revenue, sales and marketing expenses plummeted from 27% of revenue to a mere 4% in just two years. This entailed significant cuts in advertising spending, as well as the termination of free coffee promotions. And on top of all this, in 2020, Lacan also decided to scale back the level of discounts offered to customers, which effectively raised prices. The absence of free coffee combined with higher prices logically caused many customers to turn to other coffee chains, leading to a huge drop in Luckin's sales volume once again. Although new management was able to steer the company towards a financially healthier state with these cost-cutting initiatives, the road to profitability, however, involved much more than just cutting costs. It also required ingenious ways of increasing revenue. And looking at Luckin's sales figures, they somehow managed to grow their revenue every single year, even during 2020 when they shut down over 500 stores. This naturally begs the question of how did they do it? And this brings us onto the second and more impactful component of their turnaround, revenue growth. Luckin's extraordinary revenue growth can be attributed to three crucial drivers, the first being product innovation. In 2019, Luckin stumbled upon a game-changing coffee drink that laid the foundation for their remarkable turnaround. Brown sugar boba latte, made by combining coffee latte with ingredients used to make boba tea, was created in a stroke of luck when a team originally hired to develop tea products for Luckin's separate tea brand started messing around with coffee. The drink sold surprisingly well as its sweetness resonated with young Chinese consumers who preferred sweeter beverages like milk tea. Recognizing this opportunity, management began investing heavily in product R&D, hoping to create additional drinks that could match the popularity of the brown sugar boba latte. By blending coffee with all kinds of ingredients that are not traditionally used to make coffee such as tea, juice, jam, cream, flavored milk, fruit syrup, and even fresh fruit, the R&D team went on to develop a series of innovative coffee beverages with all kinds of sweet and funky flavors, making them more palatable to Chinese consumers who were new to coffee and not yet accustomed to its natural bitterness. With these new drinks, Luckin evolved from just selling traditional coffee to now also selling a new type of coffee beverage that appealed to a much broader customer base beyond just functional coffee drinkers massively enlarging the size of its target market. Due to the extraordinary demand and a lack of alternatives, these new beverages enabled Luckin to achieve what was previously impossible, raise prices while simultaneously increasing sales volume. Luckin's first bestseller, the newer latte, launched in September of 2020, was priced at 18 Chinese yuan, 2 yuan higher than the traditional latte. Despite the higher price, it enjoyed tremendous success, single-handedly making up 29% of all drinks volume in its first week. Half a year later, Luckin launched their next bestseller, the Coconut Milk Latte, pricing it at 20 yuan, 2 yuan higher than the previous newer latte. Once again, Luckin shattered sales records with this drink despite of its higher price. The Coconut Milk Latte accounted for over 17% of Luckin's sales volume over the next four quarters, and until today remains Luckin's most successful drink. In fact, the Coconut Milk Latte was so popular that other coffee shops began offering their own versions of the drink. And in 2022, it even became the most sold coffee drink on China's largest food delivery platform, surpassing the classic latte and Americano. With the new innovative coffee beverages, Luckin discovered a playbook of pricing new bestsellers at gradually increasing prices. This trend is continuing to this day with Luckin's latest offering, a green tea-flavored latte launched in the beginning of 2023, which is priced at 22 yuan, another 2 yuan higher than the previous bestseller, the coconut milk latte. Luckin's success in R&D filled their ability to continuously introduce new drinks into the market. In 2021 alone, Luckin launched an impressive 113 new products, averaging one new product every three days. In contrast, Starbucks only released around 20 products that year. This staggering difference is largely due to Starbucks China's slow decision-making process, as they require approval from the US headquarters for new product launches. As a result, Starbucks, like many other large multinational corporations, often struggle to adapt to new consumer trends as swiftly and as flexibly as smaller local players like Luckin. 
And while only a small fraction of Luckin's new drinks actually end up becoming bestsellers, the sheer volume of releases meant that Luckin was able to consistently come up with new blockbuster drinks that ended up driving a significant portion of their revenue growth. The second key driver to Luckin's incredible growth is successful marketing. Beginning in 2021, the company's marketing strategy shifted from a heavy reliance on performance ads to a strong emphasis on brand advertising. Given the popularity of its new drinks with young consumers, the company began targeting this demographic segment and aimed to associate their brand with four specific traits, professionalism, youth, fashion, and wellness. They advertise heavily on popular social media platforms that are used religiously by the younger Chinese population, such as WeChat, the Chinese super app, Douyin, the Chinese version of TikTok, and Red, the Chinese equivalent of Instagram. Luckin also sought to find the right brand ambassador for the company, and they hit the jackpot at the end of 2021 when they secured an endorsement deal with then 18-year-old freestyle skier Eileen Gu. Luckin was able to sign Eileen for a relatively low fee because she was still largely unknown in China at the time of the deal. However, just five months later, she turned into a national sensation after becoming the first person ever to win three medals at a single Winter Olympics. Eileen's success at the 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics, combined with her choice to represent China over the US, generated significant media coverage and made her one of the most beloved and championed athletes in China. Luckin capitalized on her fame by prominently featuring her virtually everywhere they could, in their app, on ads, in articles, and on social media, helping them establish the young, professional, fashionable, and healthy brand image that they were looking for. This propelled Luckin to become the preferred coffee brand amongst the younger generation, surpassing even the once highly regarded Starbucks. In a prominent survey that asked young participants to rank their favorite coffee brands, Luckin climbed from the sixth lowest position in 2019 to becoming the top ranked brand in 2022. In contrast, Starbucks, plagued by health and safety scandals, experienced a dramatic decline, falling from first place to last place within the same period. Luckin's rise in Starbucks' decline in popularity amongst young consumers is further highlighted by the two brands' customer profile. The online customer data from July of 2022 showed that Luckin attracted a younger demographic, with their largest customer age segment being 90 to 24 year olds, whereas for Starbucks, 31 to 35 year olds represent the biggest segment. Luckin's effective marketing strategy meant the company was able to significantly enhance its brand image amongst young consumers despite cutting advertising spending by nearly 60%. While the precise impact of improved branding on sales is often difficult to quantify, the data shown here suggests that Luckin's successful marketing and branding initiatives have been instrumental in driving revenue and profit growth. The third key driver of Luckin's revenue growth is the successful implementation of the franchising business model. After new management took over, they adopted a dual approach to store expansion, opening company-operated stores in the higher-tier cities and franchise stores in the lower-tier cities. This strategy allowed them to maintain direct control and ensure consistent quality in the lucrative high-tier cities where most of the coffee market is concentrated in, whilst expanding rapidly via franchising into the numerous but less lucrative lower-tier cities. By leveraging the knowledge and networks of local franchisees, Luckin skipped having to do things like site selection, negotiating leases, staff hiring and monitoring operations for stores in over 230 cities, expediting its expansion whilst lowering its upfront investment and reducing its risk. Under this strategy, the number of franchise stores skyrocketed nine folds in just three years, from 280 stores in 2019 to over 2,500 stores in 2022. Revenue from franchising surged from a mere $2 million to $450 million within this period and ended up accounting for 23% of the company's total revenue in 2022. Luckin's success with franchising is partially due to the popularity of the innovative coffee drinks, which boosted their store-level unit economics and in return attracted franchisees. However, the unconventional franchising terms set by management also played a significant role. Unlike traditional franchising business models, Luckin does not charge upfront joining fees or annual franchise fees. And instead of charging royalties based on the franchisee's gross merchandise value, Luckin bases it off of gross profit, only taking a cut of gross profit if it exceeds a minimum threshold. This is different from most other franchises who take a low single-digit percentage from the franchisee's GMV even if they are unprofitable. Due to this unique approach, Luckin's franchisees rarely lost money and had an average payback period of around 13 to 14 months, well below the industry average of 18 to 24 months. With an increased potential for profit and a shortened payback period, it is unsurprising to see Luckin's franchise program really taking off and massively contribute to its top and bottom line. 
Interestingly, Starbucks has taken a completely different approach to franchising and licensing in China. Unlike in North America, where 40% of its stores are licensed out to partners, Starbucks directly operate 100% of its stores in China, making China the only market in which Starbucks doesn't have any licensed stores. The decision to retain full control in China was driven by the belief that China will surpass the US to become the largest market in the future. This led Starbucks to buy their partner's 50% stake in their Chinese joint venture in 2017 for $1.3 billion, their largest acquisition ever to this day. This move allowed Starbucks to keep the whole pie to themselves and have complete autonomy with business decisions in China. However, the purely self-operated model does have its drawbacks, most notably a much slower rate of expansion, particularly in the lower tier cities. Despite a recent plan to open 9,000 additional stores by 2025, which is equivalent to opening one new store every nine hours, Starbucks still couldn't keep up with Luckin's incredible pace of opening one new store every two hours. As a result, in the lower tier cities, Starbucks store count of 860 is dwarfed by Luckin's 2,500 stores. This disparity has contributed to Starbucks' sluggish growth in China and allowed Luckin to catch up and narrow the gap between the two companies' revenue. The two companies' contrasting strategies when it comes to franchising has not only allowed Luckin to dominate the coffee market in lower tier cities, but with franchise stores now representing a third of all of Luckin's stores, franchising is what ultimately enabled Luckin to overtake Starbucks to become the largest coffee chain in China. A final point worth mentioning is how China's zero COVID policy have had drastically different effects on Luckin and Starbucks. The pandemic severely disrupted Starbucks' third space concept of relying on the spacious coffee stores to attract customers for a comfortable sit-down experience. With most of Starbucks' stores located in shopping malls, many were either forced to close or experienced significantly reduced traffic during the pandemic. In contrast, Luckin's self-pickup and delivery model thrived during this period. With most of its stores located in office buildings and in school campuses, they even saw a rise in demand as most white-collar workers still had to work in the office and most students continued going to school. If we compare the two companies' same-store sales growth, which measures the change in sales at locations that have been in operation for at least one year, we can see that Luckin has consistently outperformed Starbucks during the pandemic. In particular, in the second quarter of 2022, the period that saw a surge in COVID-19 cases across China, including a two-month lockdown in Shanghai, Starbucks reported an astonishing minus 44% decline, meaning they lost nearly half of their business versus a year ago, whilst Luckin was the complete opposite with a positive 41% growth. Interestingly, the divergence in same-source sales growth began in the second quarter of 2021 when Luckin launched their flagship coconut milk latte, suggesting that Luckin's innovative new drinks were also a major driving force behind Luckin's ability to steal market share from Starbucks. Nonetheless, it is clear that the pandemic had severely disrupted Starbucks' operations in China, whereas Luckin has arguably benefited from it. Luckin's miraculous turnaround serves as a fascinating example of how quickly a seemingly hopeless business can transform itself. While Luckin, true to its name, got incredibly lucky with their initial product R&D and with the pandemic, it would be a mistake to dismiss Luckin's success as due to luck alone. The reality is that several other key factors also played crucial roles for this twist of fate to occur. New management is focused on building solid business fundamentals, their effective execution of marketing campaigns, as well as their judgment to embrace franchising were all critical pieces of this intricate puzzle. Luckin's story serves as a powerful reminder that in business, with the right team and a bit of luck, truly anything is possible, even for a once disgraced company like Luckin Coffee to overcome scandals, fix its broken business, and surpass a dominant brand like Starbucks all in just a few short years. <laughs>